Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the latest climate update for Southern California. We're going to take you all the way through April 2021, see how we're doing so far with precipitation. Well, so far over the past 60 days, this map shows that our second half of the winter was very dry. In fact, much of California was less than half the precipitation it should receive for that period, February through April. So this is the entire water season or the wet year. So starting October 1st, all the way through now in mid-April. We can see not much better off. Most of South Central California is less than 50% of average with at best parts of California between 50 to 70% of average. So much drier than it should be for the entire region. Now, if you look at specific point locations, not the same depiction is shown. However, you can see two distinct differences. Now in San Diego area, the coast received less than the inland areas, not because of total precipitation, but compared to average. So it was wetter than average over the foothills versus the coast of San Diego. Then you can also see dramatically how it drops off towards the Coachella Valley, 10% of average, and even the Inland Empire and Orange County LA Basin area, only 30 to 40% of average for the entire water year so far. Here's a look at specific locations in Southern California. We have a long history of data in places such as San Diego. Only 4.36 inches of precipitation so far for this water year. And the water year is coming to near an end we are getting late into April. The deficits are five to seven inches in most major cities, and some of our mountain locations are over 10 inches below average. If you look at temperatures across the region, you can see also notable warmth across the mountains of Southern California. You can see the orange shaded area of two to three degrees is widespread across our mountains. So not only have we had lack of precipitation in our mountains, it's also been mild and much warmer than usual. You can see that is mostly the case for all of California this water year. Okay, here's probably the most important map. This is an objective analysis of the water year in terms of the jet stream, which brings us the precipitation or doesn't bring it like in this case. The black line is the average jet stream and the orange shaded area is where the atmosphere up near airplane level has been much warmer than average, not for a storm, but for a whole period October through April, driving the storm track far to the north and then diving southward across the Sierra Nevada, putting us on the dry side of the storm track. Now, if you compare to last year, it's similar, more amplified, large area of where it's much warmer than average, not just warmer, but warmer than average over the central northern Pacific, driving the jet stream well to the north. But it was so amplified and extreme that it allowed a dip in the jet stream, which brought several storms into Southern California. And if you remember, the desert southwest and Southern California was very wet overall for the year 2019-2020 or last year. So similar storm pattern, but a much different result due to it being more severe or amplified. It was a result of dry conditions, however, for Northern California. Can we blame this on La Nina? Well, last year we didn't have La Nina. This year we do have La Nina and it likely is a factor, but it is only part of the story. The La Nina has been in place for the course of this entire water season as shown here, but it has not been strong. If we look currently today, the most recent satellite image over the central equatorial Pacific Ocean, we can see slight cooling and that is the La Nina. Most of the Pacific remains milder or warmer than average as you see here. These are compared to long-term averages. Now, if we look across the state of California at what this water year has brought or not brought to our region, you can see that we are much below in the Sierra Nevada, 
for total precipitation. This is rain and snow. The blue shaded area is the average. You can see last year, neck and neck. So two years in a row of significantly below average precipitation in a crucial location in California for our water supply. Look at the snowpack, it's even worse. Some places in the Southern Sierra Nevada are now looking at only 15% of their average to date. So what they normally should be at. And even most of the Sierra Nevada is not more than 35% of average. This is another view and it also compares the past years or the driest or least snowiest years. You can see we're very close to 1976, 77, though we are still above 76, 77 and the lowest or least snowpack year on record, which was 2014 and 15. Remember that occurred during the heart of the most recent drought in California. If you look in Southern California, and here's a photo looking at San Gregorio Mountain, you can see that snowpack is very low with only about two inches of snow water equivalent remaining in our high mountain areas, even here in Southern California. So very little snowpack remaining, and that is largely a result of the limited storms this year and of course the warm, persistent warm conditions this past winter. Now, what does this mean for water supply? So the water supply is starting to suffer across the state. You can see the major reservoirs in Northern California, Lake Oroville and Shasta. Compared to the red line, the blue line is well below the average to date. So they are starting off much lower than they should be and they're also going to receive considerably less snowpack runoff over the next month or two. This has resulted in the latest drought monitor as shown here, issued April 22nd. The drought conditions are worsening across most of the West, including California. We now have a large area of D3 or extreme drought expanding across South Central California. And we can see much of the Colorado River Basin also suffering in D3 or 4, and D4 is the worst case scenario of the exceptional drought. So unfortunately, drought is expanding. We can also see this in the one year change that drought has expanded significantly since this year compared to last year at the same time. The brown shaded areas show that we have degraded in the drought conditions at several categories in the Southwest. All right, so what's in store for the next several months? If we look at the core of our upcoming summer season, June through August, and also this includes a good portion of the monsoon season here for Southern California, the desert Southwest, there is a prediction for the potential of an earlier and heavier monsoon. Now, part of this reasoning is because of what I just showed you, the lack of snowpack, the early melt, and the unusually warm conditions that will likely develop late this spring and early this summer. That is a driving mechanism to the upper level high pressure system, which ultimately creates the monsoon flow. So the monsoon isn't something that comes in off the oceans or the land. It's something that results from the intense normal heating in the deserts, but it varies each year depending on how persistent, extreme, or how it departs from normal, that heating over the desert. So again, we are expecting, because of the limited snowpack and very dry conditions, a quicker warm-up in the desert southwest and Four Corners region, which could favor, at least for Arizona, an earlier start in a heavier monsoon season. It may not translate though into bringing that moisture into Southern California uh, often. Let's look at the temperature forecast. This is the upper level high pressure system clearly reflected in this forecast. Stronger and more persistent, similar to last year, which means for us, uh, more heat waves and a more dominant upper level high pressure system over the desert Southwest. So 
All of this is negative, though, towards the water supply because of the excessive heat resulting in more evaporation. If we can generate a more persistent monsoon and not block the monsoon, meaning that the upper level high pressure is not too dominant and broad like it was last year, we should be able to bring in at least average conditions of monsoon into Southern California. But uh, this does anticipate the above average temperatures for our summer season.